Hey guys, we are going to look at free games today from a financial perspective and see what happened to them. So the first game we're looking at is Disney Locana. I don't think I've made very much content about Disney Locana. I think it was fun to play, it's fun to open as a new game, but the long-term sustainability of Disney Locana, I question. I don't think it is a in terms of an investment opportunity, a very good investment long term. Now, if you want a quick flip, you can quick flip anything nowadays, right? It's just a matter of how fast you can flip it. The box prices have dropped. This reminds me a lot of One Piece, a lot of uh, Meta Zoo. A lot of people hype this up as an investment opportunity. I would even go so far to say Magic the Gathering, Yu-Gi-Oh! and even Pokemon boxes. You got to be very careful what box you pick. You know, one day you're picking Chilling Rain, the other day it's Evolving Skies, the other day it's, you know, a set that no one wants, right? It's Battle Styles. Those sets came out at the exact same time, and when Battle Styles came out, they didn't know that this is better or worse than Evolving Skies. I mean, people opened Battle Styles, because that was the new set. Every new set looks shinier than the last set. So in terms of... You know, where I feel like this is heading and in terms of, you know, in investment opportunities, I would say there simply is not that many investment opportunities available in card games. And instead of, of buying this, you are better off investing in stocks of some type. Again, I'm not going to give you financial advice on stocks because I don't know it very well. If I did know it really well, I would tell you, but I know that... In times where people don't know what to do, uh, Warren Buffett say this, uh, put money into just the S&P 500 and let, let it ride out. And again, without having done much research, that's exactly what I decided to do. I put money in the S&P 500 and the graph is the reverse of these <laughs> charts, right? The graph is up, up, and away. Uh, I'll show you the S&P 500 a little later from my own money I made. I probably made over 180000 in the last uh, year from the just S&P 500 alone in stocks. So they've done, I mean, they've done that, that well, right? I mean, how do I afford my collection? Well, I make, I own a law firm, uh, which is doing really well. We just signed a new client. Could be a huge client for us. Um, could we do immigration and patent? So this is the immigration. He has 10 potential employees he wants to bring over. Could be a lot of money. We'll see how the first one goes. And I own a marketing agency. We do, we do less marketing than we did before. During the pandemic, we were 100. We didn't, we didn't even have a law firm. We just did marketing the whole time. Marketing has slowed down somewhat. But you gotta get a real job, like in a real business, and a real that like cards should be a hobby, and investing in them is stupid, um, because they will never out the time that you put into your hobby will never be more than a lawyer's billable hour per hour, uh, will never be more than a marketing agency owner. So I think the idea that people have and have been trying to tell people, hey. You're poor, you're poor, you're poor. It kind of reminds me of Graham Stefan. Uh, invest in FTX. Invest in these uh, Godo Bank and all these other crypto coins. It's not going to work for the simple fact that by the time they tell you that advice, everyone's done it already. It's like, how can I say? Like the I've made a lot of money on stocks this year. Like a shit ton of money. Like an unbelievable amount of money. I put money in this stock called PDD. It tripled in price. Just uh, over the last two years, it tripled in price. Out of the blue, I put money in Facebook. That's doubled in price. Exxon Mobil is doubled in price. There are some banger stocks out, and this is just like I, I started this fund to kind of compare. You know, if I put uh, at the time three hundred and fifty thousand into a home, three hundred fifty thousand into a Magic the Gathering collection, and, and sealed. 350,000 to Pokemon, where would they be today? And I can tell you, none of them are at 645,000 right now, minus the uh, stocks and bonds. I do have some bonds, right? Like, this is just kind of a, a fun account that, you know, I was doing in the experiment for it, and it has output. Like, if you have stocks, you know they've gone up over the past few years. Now, I don't, I can't really tell, again, I'm not an expert in this field. I can't tell you why, but 
every dollar I put in has delivered. This is Exxon Mobil, 119%, UPRO, 56 And then you look at One Piece, you know? Where am I better off putting my money as an investment? If you love One Piece, like I do, I actually have some One Piece cards coming in in the mail on Monday. We'll probably do a package opening on that day if I'm not too lazy. Um, so I actually have some One Piece coming in on Monday. Secret rares, SRs, and so on. And at the end of the day, you know, like when you want to start a family, when you want to date, when you want to have a kid, and we are five weeks, six weeks away from, you know, have the expected due date of um, birth date. Um, it is, you know, it is definitely something where you got to make better financial decisions. Investing in card games is not, for most people, for 99% of people, is not better than investing in stocks and bonds. Now, if you own a store, okay. If you are a YouTuber or an influencer with subscribers okay i get that that definitely makes sense because you're charging more money for a premium so you're, you're getting more money is what i'm saying like you don't need to really worry because that's your business so if this is your business and this is a full-time business for a lot of people it is this is a full-time business for you got ya you know 100 percent respect it and understand it but if you are just um a timmy if you will if you're a mother effing timmy and you're thinking this thing is going to get you rich. It's not. It's not. I mean, it's barely better than crypto, honest to God, in terms of risk profile. Uh, and, and then, you know, we talk about Disney Lil' Kana and we talk about One Piece dropping. But the OG drop is this MetaZoo thing. People put, people were paying $82,200. Not just one, multiple people were paying 8200 I mean... What the hell can that buy you today in MetaZoo, right? I mean, holy man, that might buy you like 10% of the company, 50 or 5% of the company, easily 5% of the company on the current company valuation and bankruptcy. So, I mean, I, I'm, I'm just kind of a little baffled as to like why people continue to say this is a good investment. This is, a, you know, simply put, it, it's really not a good investment in my personal opinion uh, for the compared to stock. You have to compare it to something. It call, it's called cost of opportunity. Cost of opportunity means if you invest $100,000 in MetaZoo, you're not putting that money in a CD, which is very safe, right? A 4%, 5% return rate. You're not putting your money in the S&P 500. Again, I'm not an expert, but um, the advice I've gotten always has been if you don't know what stock you like just and you have extra money, just dump it here. You can invest it in your family. You can invest in your business. I'm always a big proponent. So unless your business is selling cards, I don't get why everything's got to be an investment in this field. I, I just really don't. I really don't understand it. And I don't think I, you know, I'm baffled that people are still investing in these card games as an investment. 